recording. Uh, when this means that today's session, it will be on two different uh, recording. Uh, let's go back to our uh, slide. Uh, and by the way, don't worry about this time which we missed because if we uh, uh, find that the time it will not be enough, I can extend it one more day uh, because I mentioned uh, most of you are my personal friends and even the others are my uh, trainees. And as we mentioned, the most important thing, it's not just to go through slides. I want to make sure that you understood the uh, uh, security and the concept as we are playing. Uh, we have uh, a question here. Uh, can please can we have the course outline and what material can help us to also study with your training? Sure, Andy, I will do the, uh, this exercise and I will share some uh, information with you on the group. Uh, and even I can provide uh, you the name of the books which you can, it can help you to pass the CCSP exam as well. Don't worry about that. We will work, uh, I will work very close with all of you if you are interested to pass the exam and get more information. Don't worry about that at all. Even don't worry about the time. If the time it's not big enough for this, problems which we visit, we can extend it one more day till Tuesday. Uh, anyway, let's check what will happen today and tomorrow and we can agree about this date. Let's go to the tokenization and the tokenization, it is a matter of uh, hiding the data. I'll tell you something, you are familiar with this feature, but you may not know that. You know when you, uh, review your uh, credit card number in any website, it will never tell you, uh, it will never tell you the, uh, the number, uh, the, four, the, the 12 numbers. This it will never happen. Yani it, you will find maybe X or dot, whatever, like that, then like that, then like that. And the last four digits, it will be okay written. This means that this is the credit card number. This one of the model of the data hiding because they don't want the operator, for example, to see your credit card number, then we will give you only we will give you only the last four digits, which are unique, and we have to make sure that this uh, it's your really uh, your number. Uh, tokenization, it will be something different. For tokenization, usually it will be used for development. Because now, as we uh, we mentioned, or even if we don't mention, I don't know, but anyway, as we uh, know, we must have the uh, environment, uh, three different environments, <clears throat> production, testing, and development. Development and testing, it requires some sort of data. And of course, this data, it must be exactly the same as the one which is used in the production. And what we uh, developers, they are doing, we are taking a copy of the data from the production and it will, they will import this data into the uh, production side uh, or development side and use this data. But this, it will be critical and it will be very dangerous, very risky. All this data, it may consist of confidential data, credit card numbers, private uh, privacy information, so on and so on. And what is the solution? They will use tokenization. What is tokenization? Tokenization, let's say that the data, it will be one, two, three, uh, four, uh, five, uh, six, seven, eight. Let's say this is the card number. For example, when tokenization, it will consider some sort of changing the numbers or whatever it will do some token, then it will create something equivalent to this one. Then it will say, for example, the data, it will be eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Then this data, it will be in the production, but this it will be in development or testing. And both of them, they have the same format. They users can work on it in the development, but actually it does not compromise any data because it's not uh, showing any data. Uh, we have a tokenization uh, technique where the data is changing. The tokenization, 
can be used to reverse the data. It can be used to reverse the data into the original one. When this means that usually if you have uh, a data and you want to utilize it or you want to use it in development, in testing, and so on, and you will be able to use the tokenization. Tokenization, it will change the format of the data. It will be the same structure for the original data, but it will not be able to discover any virtual, uh, actual information for the user, and this it will co consider as protection for his confidentiality. Uh, we have uh, uh, one shot here. Sir, can you summarize yesterday class uh, that missed it? Uh, techno, I'm afraid that the time, uh, it's not enough to uh, summarize it uh, because uh, now almost we are at the end of the day. And I think it will be better anyway today or tomorrow. I am planning to uh, upload all the uh, recording. Uh, to the YouTube and I will send the uh, URL when you will be able to access all the recordings for yesterday and for today as well. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the other component, DLB. What is DLB? DLB is data loss prevention. And we have the, some important components for the data loss prevention. Data loss prevention, this is very important because it will protect your data inside your organization. Any data which is classified, it will not be able to exit your organization without your permission. Then if the data is classified as confidential, as private, whatever the type of the uh, classification you have, the data, it will not be, you will be able to exit outside your organization. What are the DLB components? I think in the DLB components and the data states, uh, we have a, a, a very interesting uh, points here. Because if you have, you want to have a DLB, you have to protect the data in many different services. You have to protect the data uh, from leakage from email from network, from desktop, from server, from internet, from proxy. When we have multiple sources which the data it can be leaked, then this means that if I have a DLB solution, this DLB solution must take all these points in, in, in its consideration. When you will find the DLB components, you may have one component as a software part, which it will be installed on your desktop. Then it will monitor if there is any data, it will be sent through email or it will be uploaded into box.com or iCloud or uh, Google Drive or whatever. Then it will capture this and it will send a message, prevent you and send a message for the security administrator. Also, you have to get another component for protecting the data leakage from the mail server or mail gateway. In the mail gateway, it will monitor all the traffic. When it will find any mail, it has a data which is classified, and uh, the user will try to send it outside when it will capture it and it will block it and guarantee the email and send a, a report to the security administrator. Also, you must have a component which it will monitor the network traffic. To monitor the network traffic, then if it will find any data, it will exit the network through a firewall, through IBS or whatever, then it will capture it. Also, you must have a component for the DLB solution, which it will be installed on the uh, proxy server. You know, the proxy server, it's a proxy for all the clients when we can access the internet. Then if they are trying to upload the file into uh, a public uh, email, uh, web, uh, Gmail, uh, Hotmail, uh, whatever, or if they are trying to upload it into the storage uh, devices, and this means that it will be captured and uh, 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 the data, they will not be able to uh, get uh, out. Uh, it's very important to understand one very thing, uh, important thing, my friends here in the DLB implementation. What is it? In the DLB cloud implementation, you have two different scenarios which you can follow. What are these different scenarios? Scenario number one, 
for example, you can have your own system. Suppose that you are an organization and before you are migrating your infrastructure into the cloud, you make a large investment in VLB components and you don't want to lose this investment. Then you can rent VMs in the cloud service provider, uh, install your application, configure your application to monitor this uh, traffic on your uh, VMs and on your uh, VLANs and the networks, and this it can be configured easily. Of course, it will not be very easy because you don't have, as we mentioned, the administrative controls, you don't have the uh, access for the logs, access for events, and so on, but you have to work very close with the cloud service provider to help you to install this software. Or, which is more preferred, that you can utilize this service from the cloud service provider. The cloud service provider, he will tell you, we have a version of the cloud implementation, DLB cloud implementation, then you can uh, buy it as a SaaS. You can buy it as a SaaS service. Tell him, okay, I want the DLB service. Then he will tell you, okay, if you want to install it on a server, it will cost you so and so. If you want to install it on a network, it will cost you so and so, and so on. Then this means that you will be able to make the configuration and the suitable implementation for all of them. Okay. Emerging technology and application of technologies. Both of them are almost the same, and this is a very important point which I want you to take care about. Why? I'll tell you what, what we, we, the scenario which is usually happening, and unfortunately, this it will create a problem. Suddenly, the management of your company, they will hear about some new technology. It may be AI, artificial intelligence, it may be machine learning, it may be uh, IoT, it may be uh, whatever, just name it. These are the emerging technologies which you have in the market right now. Then we'll say, okay, uh, there may be a vendor, he visit the company, he visit the marketing manager, he visit the uh, operation managers, and he tell you tell them that the IoT, this is great, we can make some configuration for you, devices can send the data to, you, uh, to our network, we can process and correlate the information, send the updates and to protect your data, or the AI it can help you to improve your performance, improve your services for the customers, and so on. You will find the managers are very excited. They want to implement these uh, uh, products, and they will put a pressure on you. We want to implement it. Although this is a new emerging technology, you are not aware about it. You don't know what are the risks. You don't know what are the sec product security controls, and you are under stress from the business when you have to install it. And in, in, I don't want to say in all cases, but if you are lucky, uh, we are lucky, 99%, we will be in trouble because when we install it and we don't understand the risks which we are facing, you will find that it's risky and it will open a back door for most of the risks and data compromisation. The emergency technologies, we are great and uh, usually, uh, usually we are saying we are as a security, security enablers. We are not stopping service, my friends. We are not stopping services. Then please, I, I hate these security administrators who are saying, no, this is not allowed. You are not allowed to do this. No, come on, who are you to say you are not allowed? Your exercise or your responsibility to make a risk assessment and say that this is risky and this it will cost you a loss or whatever. Then by the end of the day, the business uh, owner or the manager or the management or whoever the decision maker, he say, okay, I can accept the risk and I want to go with this feature, although it's risky as the security administrator mentioned, or okay, I will agree about what he is saying and I have to work with him to find another alternative and so on. And this, we will uh, uh, cover this in the risk management course. It's a very interesting topic and I'm quite sure that you will like it, inshallah, after three uh, weeks when you attend. Then it's very important to understand the emerging technology. You have to do the exercise properly. How you can do exercise properly is usually what we are saying. Make a risk assessment. 
This is the reason why we are, I am saying, if you want to work in security field and you are not familiar with encryption, you are not familiar with risk management, then please don't say that you are working in security field. Because when risk management, this is or, uh, risk assessment, this is the backbone, backbone of choosing controls, backbone of choosing uh, policies, procedures, whatever it is. And I have to, uh, tell the manager, okay, I totally agree. I will help you to make the implementation. Then there is uh, the IE, for example, AI, sorry, artificial intelligence. I will call the vendor, please visit uh, me. I want to sit with you. I have to work under understand it. I have to understand the risks. I have to work on it. If there are some risks which I can provide some controls for it, then that's I can provide it. Otherwise, if it's not, I'm really sorry. This will be risky. If you want to go for it, that's fine. But I cannot guarantee that this will be safe. Otherwise, you have to accept it. This is the proper exercise which you have to do it. Risk assessment. Risk assessment. Risk assessment. Okay. Any questions? I have one question in the chat. Explain more on hashing. Okay. As we mentioned in, in hashing, gentlemen, we have, uh, uh, it is interesting. Okay. Uh, by the way, Andy, uh, I don't know if you make a reservation for the cryptography uh, course or not. If you did not make reservation for cryptography uh, course, please send me on WhatsApp uh, a reservation. We will speak about hashing and all the methods of hashing. I will tell you and explain to you right now, but it's very important to identify this course. You will really enjoy it. Okay. What is hashing, gentlemen? Hashing is usually uh, used in integrity. It is used in integrity. You want to make sure that the data, when it is moved from one host to another host, it's not changing in between. Data can be changed uh, in a bad uh, intention or good intention. Bad intention, it's a hacker, and he will make the changes for whatever the reasons. And that a good intention that you are moving a data on a digital line. There is any electromagnetic uh, field, uh, any problem, whatever, when the data is changed. We want to make sure the data is not changed. Okay, how we can do it? You have host one. Want to send the data into host two. This is the message. Hi, how are you, host two? This is the message. He will create something called hash. Hash, this is a function which it will operate on the message. It is, it's, it's, it's something as a process, something as a process where the data, it will be as input and the output, it will be the hash. And this hash, it have a fixed length. It has a fixed length. Let's say this hash number one. And when you will send to host two, what you will send to host two? When you will send to host two, you will send him the message and H1. When the host two, he will receive it. He will say, okay, this is the message. Thank you very much. I will process it on the process, the same process as uh, happened in host number two, then it will get, uh, get another hash. It will go and say hash two. Then host number two now, it will compare hash one and hash two. If both of them are the same, if they are identical, then this means that the changes the bucket, it's not changing in between. There is no change in the bucket in between. And it will, on the data, it's not changed and it will process the data. But if the hash one and hash two are not equal, then this means that the data is changed and we have to drop the bucket. This is the 
very basic concept of rehashing. In the cryptographic course, you will find a lot of other concepts, but you know the time it's very limited, I will not be able to go through it, but in the cryptographic course, we will cover uh, three sessions, uh, average nine hours, and maybe more, it depends, and this it will be covered in more details. If you have any other questions, you are most welcome, even you can send it to me uh, online or offline. Okay, <clears throat> the data protection. Now, just a remind for you, we are discussing the data uh, protection in cloud environment, and uh, it's very important to uh, understand the concepts which we highlighted. I will uh, go through it very quickly uh, now because I know it's important. As we mentioned, the encryption for the data, the hashing uh, for integrity, key management, and uh, key management, it will be used for the uh, encryption, uh, in encryption, tokenization for hiding data, uh, data loss prevention to uh, protect the data and prevent the data to be leaked from your network. And finally, the emerging technologies. These are the important issues which I want you to know about. Them. We have other more uh, uh, concepts. Uh, for the uh, data protection. What are these concepts? Uh, I think I have one uh, shot here from Techno. Uh, thanks, I got your explanation. Well, thank you very much, Techno. Uh, and I hope that uh, this is informative folks for you. Uh, data protection. It is very important. This slide, this slide, this slide is very important. I will go through it one by one. I want the concepts to be very clear. Now you are professionals, you have the courses for security, and you are understanding the uh, concepts properly now. It is not just matter, yeah, this means so and so, and all these uh, uh, stories. No, we are not saying stories. We are professionals, we are understanding securities, and we are explaining the meaning very simple because we have the concept very well. What is the data discovery? The data discovery. Uh, this it will be popular in Europe, in uh, America. Uh, I don't think, I, I'm not afraid if it's available in China, uh, I mean Asia or not, but I'm quite sure it's not available in Africa. This data discovery, it will be, uh, you will be able to discover it better. Uh, in the cloud service provider. In some situation, you may have uh, cases or uh, legal warrant uh, or uh, illegal case, and they want to some data to be a uh, e discovery for data. Uh, it may be some emails between customers and uh, vendors or whatever the data, but this it will be for a matter of uh, uh, legal and court. And of course, this it will be a part of the uh, legal process and forensics where the data it should be discovered and it should be collected. It should be uh, have uh, a clear uh, owner for it. Uh, of course, this is not easy. And uh, if you are working in a data center, it is very easy to say that that yes, I know that my data is in this storage or that server or this desktop, I can collect it, I know who is the owner and so on. But in our situation in the cloud, it's not this scenario. This it would be very complicated because now, at the moment which we are speaking now, I can have this presentation in one of the servers in Europe. And after tomorrow, when I come and make the presentation for you again, I may access it from America. And this is normal. This is normal. We don't have any problem. This is normal. It depends upon the operations of the uh, cloud service provider. Okay. This it was the e discovery again. E discovery. If you are caring about the e discovery and you want to be able to discover the data, collect the data, you have to mention this in the SLA. I am repeating again. You have to measure to mention this in the service level agreement. You have to uh, mention uh, who is responsible for it. Look, I am looking to the camera because I know that now I am looking into your eyes. You have to put this in the service level agreement. Who is responsible for it? 
how long it will take to collect the data, who is responsible for collecting the data, who is responsible for maintaining the data and keep it secure until it will be presented in the court and so on. This is very important. Please don't forget. This is not only for e-discovery. This is anything related to the data protection. Don't accept the service level agreement, which is provided by the cloud provider, because this is for protect their business. You have to develop your own SLA. Of course, I'm not saying that you have to create it from scratch, but you have to make sure that you review it and add whatever any uh, uh, conditions uh, you require. Okay? Data classification. Data classification, it is considered the uh, back, backbone of security. Why? Why the data classification is very important? Let me give you an example. Suppose that I have a specific budget. My manager, he came and gave, he, he told me, you have one million uh, US dollars to protect our network assets, application, service, and whatever. I told him, okay, thank you. I really appreciate your help. You gave me one million dollars and I will start to do my exercise. I start to say, okay, I want to protect this server and that server and other storage and this device and so on. But unfortunately, after six months, I found that the budget is finished. And still I have very important servers are not protected. And very important data, it's not protected. Then I went very quickly to my manager. Oh, please give me another one million. We have the email, it's not protected. The uh, ERB application, it's not protected. This, it will be crisis. Hackers can be able to uh, penetrate our network. Then he asked me a very simple question. We gave you 1 million US dollars last six months. What did you do with this amount? I told him I protect uh, application X, Y, Z. He said, but application X and Y and Z, they are not important for us. Okay, they are good for us, but okay, if they hacked, it's not a big issue. But you have to start with the ERB application. We have, then you have to make the, uh, for example, our uh, enterprise uh, 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 document management. Uh, then the email, these are the importance. Aha, then this means that we have priorities. Of course, life, is priority. In our life, we have to think in priorities. Each one of us every day, uh, sorry, every month, he receives his salary. He will start to say, I have uh, 10 or 15 expenses category. Number one, it will be food. This uh, food uh, it will be category number one. Then I have rent a car, rent a home, so and so. It will be priority number two. Then number three, uh, don't come and tell me that priority number one, it will be uh, entertainment and going to uh, movies. Of course not. This means that you are wasting your time. Okay, that's fine. I will go to movie every day. I enjoy my time, but I want to eat now. I don't have any money to eat because I spent all my money and we watching movies. Then this means that we must have priorities. This the priorities in the IT, we call it as classification, data classification. It may be data classification or asset classification, whatever. Then we have to define what are the uh, 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 importance or the value of the assets. As you will see in the risk management course, for those who will attend with us uh, later, inshallah, after uh, four or uh, five weeks, I'm not sure about the schedule, uh, you will find that we will say, okay, very strange, you have to define the asset and define its value for the organization. Then whatever any asset which have highest value, it has highest uh, uh, priority, and it's consider, considered as high classification. It may be confidential, it may be uh, 
secret, whatever the classification which you will follow. Then, what is the benefit of the data classification? The benefit of the data classification is that it will define which uh, 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 data I have to start to protect it. And of course, whatever any data which has highest uh, classification, I have to provide not just one control, it may be two or three or four controls, which we call it security in depth or defense in depth. Defense in depth. I have security level number one, then level number two, then level number three, then level number four, and so on. This is really very important. We have to take it in our consideration. Then when we define the data classification, it's very important. I have to define what are the data which is considered as important for me. I have to start with that priority number one. I have to provide the protection for the ERB, then for the email, then for the others, then if the budget, which it was 1 million US dollars, it's uh, 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 finished, uh, and I will go to my manager and I tell him, I'm really sorry, I'm not able to protect all the other uh, applications. He will ask me, uh, what are the other applications which you did not protect? I'll tell him whatever any uh, data which is classified as medium and low. He would say, okay, medium and low, it's not a big issue because we don't have a budget right now. No budget, it will be uh, assigned to you by the end of the year. Then it's okay. We will accept the rest for the next six months till uh, the next year. We will give you the budget to make the exercise. Then the classification, it will be very important to define the priority of the controls, the number of controls. If you have high confidential data, you can have multiple controls to protect it. If you have low data, it can have single control. If you have a public data, of course, you don't need any controls. Just imagine I have, for example, in IT certificates, I have a document which is a training brochure. And this training brochure, do you think that I have to encrypt the training brochure on my desktop on on my notebook? Why? Why I want to do encrypt this brochure? It's uh, published over the internet. I want to send it to as many as uh, I can of the persons. They will know our services and we will know what are the services which we are providing. When there is no need at all to provide any protection. There is no need to provide any protection encryption or ELP, nothing. Don't waste your money, don't waste your efforts, don't waste your operation. This is public uh, uh, classification. But if I have uh, my materials uh, for the training, and as you asked yesterday, please, we want a copy of this. I told you I'm really sorry. We make a lot of investment of preparing these documents. If you need it, we have to uh, sell it for $25. Then this means that I have to provide a lot of security controls to protect this data from uh, compromising from any hackers, which you just imagine any hacker, he will log into my notebook. He can get this information. It is not, uh, it is, it's not a matter of money only. Yes, I, I lost my uh, assets. I lost my training slides, but the most important, my reputation. I am uh, teaching you security and a hacker, he was able to uh, uh, penetrate my desktop or my notebook when this would be a problem for me. Okay. Uh, just, uh, jurisdiction, uh, data protection. What is jurisdiction? Jurisdiction, you will hear this, explain, uh, this terminology mainly in privacy. What is jurisdiction? Jurisdiction, it is area of control. Area of control. For example, I am working here in USA, or I have a data hosted in USA, uh, as a cloud service provider, I have another uh, data uh, hosted here as in uh, Europe. Uh, I have uh, a data in uh, Asia. Uh, Asia, when we, we, we point here, as you can see that we uh, all, each one of these will have their own rules and standards and controls. In Europe, we have, for example, GDPR. In USA, we don't have GDPR, but we have uh, uh, HIBAA, HIBA, we have BCI DSS, we have SOX, we have other uh, controls. In Asia, uh, China, for example, we have their own uh, privacy controls and so on. When, in, uh, when you will hear uh, jurisdictional or jurisdiction, this is the area where we, it has specific laws which you have to take care about it. And unfortunately, this will be crisis. 
in some situation it will be very difficult because there will be some conflict. For example, in some situation in Europe, it will tell you that the retention period for data, for example, I am not sure, but it may be three years. In USA, it will say five years, for example. That, uh, for how long should I keep? If I keep it for five years, then Europe, it will say that I am uh, in compliant, uncompliant. And if I keep it only three years, USA, it will say I am not, uh, I am uh, in compliant. Then I have to keep it as a five years and I have to make a justification that this information information related to USA goals and regulations. I have to keep it for two years based on other standards and so on. Then this is the concept of the jurisdiction. Rules and responsibilities. In, in some other uh, methods, we call it the RACI. The RACI. What is the uh, rules and responsibilities? You have to be very clear in the dividing rules and responsibilities between the cloud service provider and the cloud service provider. Who is responsible for the backup? Who is responsible for storing the data? Who is responsible for key management? Who is responsible for uh, recovering a service? Who is responsible for uh, managing the uh, encryption keys, key management, and so on? Then you have to define the rules and who is responsible for it. Don't wait until there is a problem. Just imagine now, I don't have uh, any rules and responsibilities defined, and you define that we, you will use the cloud service provider as a DR site. If your production site is, it will be down, then all the service will be migrated into the, the, the cloud service provider as a DR, and the users will be able to access the application from the DR. Just imagine, I don't have rules and responsibilities. I did not know about uh, the rules and responsibilities. Now the site is down. For any reason, the site is down. I don't have any production site. Then the cloud service provider does not know anything. He does not have, know any uh, rules or any responsibilities. I am waiting for the cloud service provider and on the other hand, the cloud service provider does not know anything and he is waiting uh, for me as well. Then, okay, when I called him, why you did not uh, take an effect uh, or take an action to recover my data? He said, I did not know. It is it my responsibility? Yes, it's okay. Okay, don't be worried. I, I will uh, restart the service. Then he started the service, but he doesn't know to access the uh, resources. Then I called him, user, we are not accessing resources. What is happening? Then after I spent some time, I discovered that the DNS points, uh, it's not changing. Before it was pointing to my production site, I didn't be changed into his production site. Who will do this exercise? I don't know. Then I called him after some time, of course, it may take, some, in some situation, it may reach two days till we will be able to uh, populate the new uh, record all over the world. Then again, because the rules and responsibilities are not clear, you may face a problem and the, R, the DR side, which is our example, the RTO may be four hours or one day or whatever, it can reach up to one week because the rules and responsibilities are not clear. You have to define the rest. You have to, for example, if I, I put myself in your shoes, I'll say, okay, production is down, someone from inside the organization should call immediately the cloud service provider. I have to tell him that the production is down. Please start your exercise. I must make a contact person to the uh, cloud service provider. We have to define uh, who is responsible for the DNS records, who is responsible for HSP, who is responsible for building VMs, who is responsible for storing data, who is responsible for installing application, who is responsible for test the service, who is responsible for user test. All these rules, you have to define it very clear in a paper. You have the time, do your exercise properly. Otherwise, if you are in Europe or if you are in the States, you may be subject for fines or in some situation, may you be subject to prison. Why? Because you did not do your uh, due diligence exercise properly. Okay. 
classification of discovered sensitive data, it is the same concept uh, as we uh, highlight in uh, implement the uh, data classification, because sensitive data, it will be very important to know uh, we, that this data is sensitive, then when the data is created, you have to find the classification. According to the classification, you have to define what are the security controls, which are valid, uh, the retention Period for this data, in sensitive data, it may be stay for five years. For normal data, I don't care, or maybe one year or whatever. Uh, also, for the backup operation, sensitive data, we you may need to make a backup daily. In non-sensitive data, may maybe after every week and so on. Then this is the classification of discovered sensitive naming and definitions of controls. Controls, the controls, he mean here is the security controls. And security controls, my friends, it's very important to understand something, which is really make me very uh, sad when I hear that uh, someone, he would come to your company, we are uh, company X or Y, we are providing some services for you, uh, then you will tell him, okay, I want to have some security controls. Okay, you can use the firewall, you can use IBS, you can use BBNSSL, you can use uh, DLB, you can use uh, anti-malware, you can use mail gateway. You can... Come on, how did you propose something to the customer and you don't understand his environment? The definition of controls, it cannot be uh, implemented in this way. It cannot be suggested even in this way. We have to make a risk assessment. We have to understand the assets. We have to understand the values. We have to understand the risk levels. And based on the risk levels, we have to define the risk treatments. And according to risk treatments, we have to define the controls. And this means that you are uh, doing in a proper way. You remember yesterday when we discussed the uh, what we can call the ar uh, security architecture. Security architecture here, it has one of the main concepts. It's saying that whatever any security control, it must be related into a business goal. And any business goal, it must be related into security control. If you would say that the business control, the uh, business uh, objectives, it may uh, it, it require protecting the data or to uh, uh, make uh, available data. And this means that uh, controls as redundancy or backup it's related to the business control. This is the way of mapping and finding the control. Mapping the control to map security control into your business objectives. I'm not getting controls because it's very, well, I, I, I heard something called uh, Palo Alto Firewall. It's nice, let's get for Palo Alto. And I heard uh, another application called XYZ. This is, again, it's very nice. I want to get this application. Come on, man, do you need it? Do you really need it in your organization? Do you need it in your architecture? Can you plug this component uh, properly in your architecture? If yes, great. If not, then please don't waste your time and your money and the company money as well. This the uh, controls. Uh, data rights management, DRM. DRM or data rights management, it will be used in one case when the data, it will be uh, outside your access outside your uh, company. Uh, in other words, I have a file. This file, uh, it has the, uh, what we can say, the uh, prices, uh, sorry, the uh, salaries for my employees. I am a manager and I have a file and this file, it has the salaries for my employees. This is considered as confidential file. It's confidential file. It's classified as confidential. Because it's classified as confidential, we, as we said that this is very important, when I have encryption, the file is encrypted. If I want to send this file, uh, again, the file uh, it is uh, uh, encrypted. Uh, this file is considered as a very important uh, component for me and it's confidential for me. Then what I have to do, 
very simple. I have to uh, protect it. I have to encrypt it. Uh, I have to make uh, access control over it. AAA authentication. User will not be able to access uh, until we are authenticated, authorized, and whatever any actions we will do it. Uh, logged, of course, for authorized users. But what will happen if this file, I have to send it outside? For example, I have an auditor and the auditor, he asks for this file for any reason, or it may be a partner and this partner wants this file. How can I control this file? I will not be able. Then the DRM, this will be a protection for your files and it will add some metadata. Will be added as metadata for the file. It will be added as a metadata. This metadata, it will have to be permissions. It would say that this file it should be only read. This it can be changed. It can be deleted. It can be uh, whatever any action. When if I am Osama and I try to change, make some changes, of course I will not be able because if the administrator give me the only read permission, then I will not be able to do any other uh, permission. This is the DRM. Uh, I think we finished the uh, part number two, and uh, I think we deserve uh, 10 minutes as a break. We have one more uh, component. This it will not take a long time, but frankly speaking, I'm not able to continue. I, I need some uh, break for 10 minutes, and we will come back. Do you have any uh, questions? Now we will uh, start the last component in uh, module number three, uh, two for cloud data uh, security, which are the security concepts uh, related to uh, cloud computing. First thing, the security the security concepts are is the Retention, deletion, and archiving. This is very important, my friends. This is very important. And I really appreciate your uh, attention here because this it would make a uh, 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 big difference in uh, your uh, evaluation for the cloud service providers and for the SLA agreement. It depends when you will have a retention policy for your data, how long it will be stayed. It's not a matter of period of uh, 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 continuity of the data only. This is not the target. No, what is the main target of it? The main target retention of the data, of course, how many years should I keep the data online or active? Okay, then how I will delete it? After say the retention period was five years, how I will delete this data? You 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 remember yesterday we mentioned that you can delete the data by using different methods, uh, hard disk crashing, and this is not acceptable in uh, in, in, in cloud uh, cloud environment. Uh, hard disk decoding again not acceptable in cloud environment. Uh, overwriting, okay, that's fine, but we have to follow some conditions. Or uh, cryptography uh, encryption, again, that's it's okay, and we have to, again, consider some conditions. Then uh, we have to define number of period of years which you have to give the data, how the data it will be deleted, and also archived, how the data it will be archived. What is the difference between data archive and data backup? Let me give you an example here. This it will be very important. Suppose that you have your server, this is an ERB server, your ERB server in your organization, and you have some data on it. And this data, it has uh, the data here, two years old. After uh, the two years, you found that the performance of the server start to decrease because the size of the data increased. And when you are making any search for the data, it will take some time. Then you decide that you will migrate the data which is older than one year. Any data which is older than one year, it will be migrated into another storage. Another storage. Then this it will be uh, older than one year. And this one, it will be the data.
this one it will be the data which is less than one year then whatever any data less than one year it will be stored on the server and this it's called online data this is called online data the data which is the, its age more than one year it will be go to this cost effective storage and it will be a little bit slow and it called archived data archived data then this means that if a user is connected there is user here and he is connected to the server he wants to access the uh, data and the user he wants to access the data what will happen all the data online he will be accessed immediately immediately without any delay this the data which is reside on the erb server because this is online it's stored on the server but for the archived data for the archived data which is somehow uh, uh, on the storage uh, uh, performance it will take some time until it will be recovered then for example if the user you want to recover uh, 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 what we can say uh, record which is stored on the production server it will take 0.1 second 0.1 second but if you try to access uh, another record which is stored in the uh, archive in the archive uh, storage it will take 0.5 second then this means that now it will take longer time but it will be better because the server performance it will be higher and you can keep the uh, archive uh, data uh, as uh, long as you can also when you will make a backup you will make a backup for the online data only which it will be it's only one uh, years old and it will be uh, compared with the total size of the memory it will be less in the backup process and this is the most important point which you have to understand these concepts what is the difference between the uh, online data the archived data the backup data these three expressions which are very important to understand it. It killed because when you are using wrong terminology in the SLA will be against you. If you will say, for example, online and you mean archive, if you raise a case against the cloud service provider because he does not provide you your requirements, this is your mistake because online means that the data which is stored on the server it may be uh, age less than one year whatever any data more than one year will be go to as archive it will be stored on another most effective servers it may be hard desk uh, but the erb online it may be ssd or whatever the backup backup it will be done for the online data not for the archive usually for the archive you are using object storage and the object storage it would give the data for a specific period of time it, uh, configurable of course and there is no need for archive you don't need to make any uh, sorry there is no need for backup you don't need to make any backup for uh, object uh, storage okay this is very important you have to understand this is very important retention relation archiving you have to include this in your sla Please try to attend any course for the uh, ITIL version 4 foundation course. This is very important to give you information. Data archiving, we covered it in the previous section. Legal hold, uh, this of course, it will be very important if you are living in Europe, if you are living in uh, USA, because as we mentioned that there may be a case and if there is any case, then you will have a warrant or you may have uh, 
uh, request from the court for discovering some data, collecting data, and this data it should be presented to the uh, court, and we you, you must have some sort of uh, handling of this data. Uh, of course, this is not valid in uh, Middle East, but this it will be very important for uh, other foreign com com uh, companies, and this is important if you are working with any of your customers who is living in uh, these uh, areas, you, are, you have uh, to clarify this in the SNA, who is responsible for collecting data, who is responsible for reserving data, who is responsible for keeping data secure, who is responsible for uh, presenting data, and all this information should be very clear in the service level agreement. Okay, the last point, which you have to take it as a security concept related to the uh, cloud computing, but if you don't mind, I will stop here because I want to take the attendance record for the uh, attendance certificate. As we mentioned, but the attendance certificate, it will be uh, provided uh, in the case if you attend the five, uh, three sessions based in, on our uh, attendance record. This, it will take a few minutes. I will take a snapshot for the uh, screen here, snap, uh, new. Here we are. Then we have to store it. Okay, thank you. We have the uh, record for the uh, attendance, for the attendance certificate, inshallah. Okay. Uh, auditing, tracing, and accountability. In security, we are caring about the auditing, about tracing, about accountability. These are very important expressions and very important concepts. Auditing, as we mentioned, I am not authorized to make an audit for the cloud service provider network because this means that I can compromise this network if I can understand how it looks like and how it is configured, especially the security controls. But by the end of the day, if he will provide me a report that he is ISO uh, 2001 uh, uh, compliance or his uh, BCI DSS or I have SOC two or three reports, this it will be acceptable for me. Tracing and accountability, this means that you must have a clear, clear, clear log for every action for non-rebudiation. Then if you, for example, let me give you an example. Today, it's say 9 p.m. and I went to the ATM and I withdraw uh, 1,000 Egyptian bound, okay? Next day, I went to the bank uh, and I told them, please, I want uh, a report uh, with my uh, account and how many Egyptian bounds do I have in my account? When they give me a report, I told them, I'm, no, no, I'm really sorry. There is uh, 1,000 uh, Egyptian bound or uh, is missed here. They said, no, you withdraw this amount yesterday at 9 p.m. from this machine, which is located in this location. This which we call it non-rebudiation. I cannot deny this action. Why? Because we have a record that proves that I did this action. This record, it may be a record in a database, it may be an email, it may be a normal record, a text file, it can be whatever it is, but it, is, it, it will be formal, uh, a tool which it will prove that I did something. And this will be very helpful. Because you, usually the security people, they will collect all these informations or all our actions which you are, the users are, uh, are taking, 
on the network, send it to a centralized same solution or uh, syslog server or whatever, making correlation, checking all this information, then we will be able to discover if there is any attack or if there is any hacker or any compromise for the network and so on. Then accountability is very important. Then why we are saying this? Because now if I am sitting in my data center, I don't care. I have my centralized location where I'm collecting all these data from different sites here and there. But in, in the cloud service provider, I have to include in the service level agreement. Look, again, I'm saying service level agreement. In the service level agreement, I have to mention how I will be able to collect these logs. This it will be very important. I have to collect this data, and this logs it will be collected every specific time. How we will be provided to my infrastructure or the cloud service provider you do the exercise on my behalf and provide this information to me in how it will looks like. I have to work very close from day one, gentlemen. When you will have an agreement with a cloud service provider, you have to make sure that all your requirements are covered. Don't say that this, I missed it and I have to do it after I make the uh, agreement. This, it will be a crisis because if you tell you, oh, we are really sorry, we are not able to provide you any log file, then this means that what you have to do, you have to go to your business owner and you tell him, I'm really sorry, you have to migrate the data or uh, to another cloud service provider or I have to go back into a data center. This, it will be a crisis. This, it will be a crisis. No one you will accept this uh, concept. Then what you have to do, you have to make sure that you are uh, uh, collecting all your requirements. Sit yourself with a cup of uh, tea or coffee and say, okay, what do I need? What I am doing in my data center here? I have to collect the data, I have to send it into SIM, I have to make a correlation, I have to review the data, I have a SOC, where the SOC is doing the exercise for me, and uh, I need to have uh, incident management. If there is any incident, I have to uh, check who will be responsible for handling the case of the incident and all this stuff. Then do your exercise, do your do delegant, uh, delegance properly. Gentlemen, the migration into a cloud computing, it's not a forked left. It's not a matter of migrating application. Everything is going fine, great. No, it is not this the case. You have to make sure that in some situation when you make the assessment, you will find that the cloud computing, it's not the right option for you. It's not the right option for you. Especially if you have sensitive data and all this stuff, then it will be better to keep the data because you know why. In some situation, if you have a sensitive data and the base security concepts or uh, controls which are provided by the cloud service provider, it will not be enough. Then you will tell him, please, I want to increase the encryption for data at best, and I want to increase here DLB, and I want to increase DRM, and I want to increase IRM. You will find that by the end of the day, you reach to the same cost, which it will be almost similar to be on-site then or on-prem. Then keep it on-prem. Why you will have to migrate? But again, we have to take it our consideration that we have to save the R, we have to save operations, we have to save backup. There are other factors. But do the exercise, do an, do an assessment, do a risk assessment. This it will be very important. Then please. When you work with the cloud, don't take it as uh, just migrated. We are really happy. Everything is going great. We don't have any operations, everything on the cloud. Believe me, in some situation, you may be in a crisis. You may be in a crisis, especially if this cloud service provider, you will provide any proprietary format or anything. If you have a cloud service provider who is provide you with a uh, uh, Standard for, for example, SAB, we have providing SAB over cloud. Microsoft, we are providing their application over cloud. Uh, Salesforce, uh, uh, all these companies, we are providing standard applications. We don't have any problem with these companies because we know that this uh, application, it's a standard format, open format. I can export it. I can import it. But this, it will be great. It's, it's, it's okay. We don't have any problem. But this does not mean that I'm not, I'm telling you, uh, don't do it your exercise. No, you have to do your exercise. When you will do the risk assessment, instead of finding 100 risks 
with these companies, you may find only 50 risks which you have to work on it. And you may find some risks which you have to highlight and to tell him, please, I need some more protection here. I need some more uh, logs here or who will care about the incident and the incident management and all this stuff. Okay. Now we finished module uh, number two. Uh, do you have any questions? I think in chat I find some points. Uh, techno, I need more clarification on ES, BES, and SAS. Uh, I think uh, we covered this uh, techno, but anyway, uh, we will uh, provide the uh, recording uh, to, uh, tomorrow, not today, because today it will be downloaded. Tomorrow, inshallah, I will upload it into the uh, YouTube channel and send you the URL. Then please go through the video recording. If you have any questions, I can answer it to you in the morning after the uh, session. Uh, this for Techno. Uh, for uh, Jackson, I have network challenges. Uh, I'm really sorry to hear that, uh, Jackson, but uh, as we mentioned that the uh, recording, it will be uploaded into the uh, YouTube channel tomorrow morning when you'll be able to uh, have a look on all of them. If you have any problem or any clarification, please don't hesitate to uh, ask me uh, when we start the session. For uh, Badr, thank you. It was great session. Thank you very much, uh, Badr. I really appreciate uh, and I really appreciate for you uh, your questions and your attendance. Uh, it was maybe general data, but today it's very interesting. Uh, yes, and I think also better uh, tomorrow and day after tomorrow, if we will have another day, it will be very interesting. Yesterday, uh, of course, it will be because we are speaking about architecture, then this it will be uh, normal. Uh, information for you, but today and uh, uh, tomorrow, inshallah, you will find uh, a big difference because we will go in deep, as I said, we will dig uh, this information more and more. Uh, Techno, very interested trust. Thank you very much, Techno. I really appreciate your feedback. I'm really happy that you are uh, satisfied. Uh, great, thank you very much, Badr. I really appreciate, gentlemen, your uh, nice words, and I'm really happy with this uh, uh, group. You have a very uh, interactive uh, reaction, and this is it's, it's helping me to give you all my information, which I want to share it with you. Thank you very much for your attendance, and I'm looking forward for your uh, meeting. Uh, thank you, Jackson. You are a great total. Thank you very much. Thank you. I really appreciate this nice words this uh, it's considered uh, believe me when uh, I see these notes it uh, usually it, uh, let me forget all my uh, retired and the time which we spent in preparing these courses because we are uh, really happy that you are uh, satisfied and it was informative uh, Andy please don't forget the course outline okay Andy but I am not sure I'll be able to do it today or tomorrow because frankly speaking I have a problem with my son and I'm busy with him but I promise that I will send it to you uh, maybe within two days yeah not today, tomorrow it will be the day, day after and uh, please accept my uh apologize for that but uh, my son he is sick and i have to go to the doctor with him tomorrow inshallah i wish you the kindness help and support thank you very much i really appreciate and i am really happy to hear this from you uh, please, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to uh, ask it. And uh, I am looking forward to see you uh, tomorrow, inshallah. Uh, tomorrow morning, I will send you the uh, uh, recording for today and yesterday. Go through it. If you have any questions, we can work it together uh, with each other. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Jackson. So am I. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, gentlemen. See you tomorrow, inshallah. Thank you.